You have to go back to the origins of how Steve had sold planning to the agency. Mm -hmm. Has anybody talked to you about this? Mm, probably not. It, uh, the agency was structured with a marketing department mm -hmm. and a media planning and buying department. Mm -hmm. And his rationale for doing it was, he had to perform a financial ration, rationalisation mm -hmm. for it, was to kill the marketing department because clients were becoming increasingly less willing to, to, to if you like, subcontract that. Pay for it directly. The, the pitching wasn't going so well. Um, direct no, no, it's just that uh, uh, more and more <laughs> clients in the 60s were, a lot of them were quite weak at marketing, mm. never mind branding. Sure. Um, and therefore a lot of marketing analysis was done by the agency. Mm -hmm. That was lessening a bit. Uh, and the rationale was that if we took the media, intermediate decision, mm -hmm. and the marketing function, mm -hmm. and put them together under this new thing called planning, mm -hmm. then it would be more cost efficient for the agency, it would give the agency a competitive edge, it would produce better strategic planning, um, but it would save money as well. Why would it save money? Because uh, you wouldn't have the marketing department and you'd take some of the media function away and put it into a smaller... Ah. Thing. So you could even look at it, the, the benefit on the time sheet? So okay. what was what it was doing then was, was erroneously pushing the media function into me, just a media buying rather yeah. than getting involved with the intermediate decision. Yes. Because the argument was that that should be taken much, much before you, before you actually started thinking about overall mm -hmm. communications, not, and therefore as part of the strategy. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, and therefore, if you came from a media background, which Tony Steph, for example, mm. did, yeah. I think Dan came from media research as well, okay. then it was a, a combination of media people, marketing people, and some outside research people who all came together to give the agency this more brand and consumer focused function. Um, it was glued together intellectually by Stephen. Mm -hmm. So he not only created a department, but he also created the tools mm. that the department would use. Right. And he glued people together less by a management style mm -hmm. uh, and more by an intellectual rigour. Mm. Uh, so he invented things like the T-plan, the planning cycle, mm. planning guide, yeah. and, and all of that was, all of that drove uh, a reasonably common way for the agency to communicate and for it to work. And how did he use them, or how did he expect you to use them? Um, by the early 70s, it was all centred around the planning cycle. Right. So you were expected to use intellectual rigour to analyse mm. where are we, why we're there, where could we be, etc. Mm. Um, within that, there were certain other tools like the T-plan, mm. um, Defining target audiences, there was the philosophy of stimulus and response, which mm -hmm. was uh, uh, put, used a lot by Jeremy and by Stephen, and that was that at the time was a big selling point for the agency. Mm -hmm. People would be talking about messages, and we, we would be talking about responses. Yeah. Um, and at the time, that thinking was in, innovative um, and gave the agency quite a distinctive edge. Mm -hmm.